After a pretty abysmal month of April for the Seattle Mariners in 2023, they've started to turn it around in May, which hasn't always been the case for this team. May has always been a cursed month for this team, but we're going to go over the good, the bad, and the ugly of the start to the month of May with the Oakland series and the Houston series, and of course, the start to the Rangers series, and look at, hey... What have the Mariners done that have made them a little bit better this year in May than they were last year? Now, I'm someone who always likes to end with the good and on a positive note. So first, let's start with the really ugly. One of the first things that we have to talk about has been the base running thus far in May. We have seen some pretty abysmal base running, including Teoscar Hernandez getting thrown out at second base in a relatively pivotal moment in an Astros series, as well as Ty France trying to go to third, I guess, on a pop-up from Jared Kalanick to the shortstop. The Mariners have been really aggressive on the base paths, and it has not been working out for them in those scenarios. In terms of Ty France coming off of second base, I guess I can kind of understand thinking that ball is going to fall, but it is the first inning you have runners on second and third with nobody out. You have to make sure that ball is down before you start going, because you're about to run yourself out of an inning, and that is exactly what they did against Belak in the third game of the Astros series. And for Teoscar Hernandez, what he did was in excusable in my opinion trying to stretch a double and getting thrown out at second base after hesitating in the middle of the base pads if you hesitate at all you have to go back to first base especially when you're down by two a base runner is pivotal there because then a blast would tie up the game but instead we had Teoscar Hernandez getting thrown out at second base and the Mariners ended up losing that one game otherwise it could have been a sweep against the Astros who knows what would have happened of course but with Teoscar Hernandez getting thrown out that is such a big play and such a big let down for the entire offense that inning and honestly going on with that it's not being able to score guys with runners in scoring position again let's go back to that third game against the Astros and talk about the runners on second and third with nobody out unfortunately the Mariners just can't score guys in that situation for whatever freaking reason they can only score guys with when they have two outs that's it it's the only time Mariners can score if you guys get runners on you're just not scoring when you're the Mariners right now. They've had their chances. They really have. And it took a balk to get a run in for the Mariners in that third game of the series. And they only put up three runs when in all actuality, they should have ended up with five or six. Of course, part of that does come down to running yourself out of an inning, but also just not coming up with timely hits. Guys coming on with nobody out and then striking out, striking out, and then popping up, and then the inning is over. We've seen it time and time again with the Mariners, and lately they've been a little bit better with the bases loaded, but for the last few years, this team with the bases loaded has been one of the most uncompetitive teams in all of baseball. Moving on to the bad, we have to first talk about the middle infield depth. Obviously, Colton Wong rolling over on his wrist, Right after he just started to heat up at the plate, J.P. Crawford has been pretty pivotal for the Mariners, and he has been day-to-day -day after fouling a ball off of his knee. It'll be interesting to see how he fares in the entirety of the Rangers series. The Mariners don't necessarily have the depth to fill out both those positions if both of those guys were to be hurt at the same time, so I would hate to see one of these guys go down and then have the other one follow shortly thereafter. Jose Caballero, of course, has been a really good addition, but the altercation that Caballero got into with Martin Maldonado, which in my opinion was completely Maldonado's fault and Cabby had no problems there, but nonetheless, that could have turned really ugly in a big game when you're already winning. Having a benches clearing brawl in that situation is not something you want to see because we don't want one of our guys to get hurt. I do respect Jose Caballero kind of giving it to the veteran when he's been in the big leagues for a handful of games. But at the same time, this team has been struggling right now. And if someone was to get hurt, if, let's say there was a brawl. If someone was to get hurt or suspended, that is really going to take a toll on this team, especially with a big Rangers series coming up. And then the chase rates for the Seattle Mariners in the big spots. Honestly, they have looked really, really bad. We've seen Teoscar Hernandez swing at sliders in the other batter's box. We have seen Julio look really bad at the plate lately when he has a pitch up in the zone that he just can't quite get to. Ty France has been chasing quite a bit. The Mariners as a whole have been striking out a ton. They set a new record for strikeouts in a single game not that long ago with 19 strikeouts. And we knew this team was going to strike out a lot, of course, when you add Teoscar Hernandez to Eugenio Suarez along with Julio and even Jared Kelnick for that matter. You knew these guys were going to swing and miss quite a bit, but it's been, I think, even more than we all really expected. Also, just adding to the bad, the Mariners lost on City Connect night, the debut of the City Connect jerseys. You hate to see that. You gotta win when you debut your brand new fancy jersey. And speaking of City Connect, make sure you go over to foco.com in the description down below and check out these brand new City Connect baubles from Foco of Julio and the Mariner Moose and use code MarinerMojo10 at checkout for 10% off your order. And to really talk about the good of what's happened in May so far, we have to look at May last year and even the year prior to really understand how much better the Mariners are this May than they were last May. 
First, we look at 2021, where the Mariners went 13 and 15 in the month of May with a 464 winning percentage. They hit 199, 274, 350 in May. The offense was atrocious. My goodness. They nearly did have a 500 record, though, going 13 and 15, but it was definitely their worst month by far that they had in 2021. And if you thought that record was bad, well, let me show you May of 2022, where the Mariners went 10 and 18. They did hit 243, 317, 386, but 10 and 18 is just unacceptable and definitely the worst month that they had had by far in 2022. Listen, if you think April was bad in 2023, just look at May of 2022. And remember, the Mariners made the playoffs that year. In April, the Mariners went 11 and 15 this year. Only 11 wins, 15 losses. It's not pretty. They did it 219, 296, 376. It wasn't pretty, but they got there. And so far, the Mariners are on pace to greatly surpass that in the month of May. We've seen really good performances out of the pitching staff, and that has to be one of the biggest parts of the good side of May for the Mariners. Of course, we saw the debut of Bryce Miller, and he looked good against the Athletics, and he looked good against the Astros. He's someone who very well might be here to stay the bullpen's been really good we saw Juan 10 coming in and make his debut we also saw guys like Matt Brash kind of get off the schneid a little bit and all in all the Mariners were able to hold down the Astros lineup in the month of May thus far and that's a pretty dang good start they've been able to win two series thus far of course sweeping the athletics and nearly sweeping the Astros going two and one against them and now with the Rangers series it's just a matter of time before we see what this team's really made of bruh and honestly, the biggest part of May so far is seeing a lot of the guys get out of the slumps they've been in. Julio is slowly finding his way back. He had a big home run in that last game against the Astros. Ty Francis had a couple of multi-hit nights. Again, we saw Colton Wong start to look good. Caballero has been pretty decent. Teoscar Hernandez is slowly but surely finding his way out of whatever the heck happened to him in Philadelphia and Toronto. And it looks like the offense for this team is starting to wake up. Nope. While the pitching staff is still playing really well. And I think for the month of May especially, after we had the gauntlet that was April, the month of May is a little bit softer of a schedule for the Seattle Mariners and this is a really good month for them to go out there and kind of calm down the fans a little bit after that first rough month just keep in mind at the end of the Astros series the Mariners were tied with the defending World Series champions and had already won the first series and looking at the month of May which has been the worst month for the Mariners by far the last two seasons it's definitely off to a better start this year with that being said, April was a tough month for the Mariners, and there was a lot of reasons for that, but I think there was one big reason I talked about it in this video here. Go ahead and check that one out. Appreciate you guys watching this one, and go Mariners!